everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Smart NFT Podcast. I'm your host, Eugene Crypto MC. The Blast Layer 2 ecosystem is rocking. It reached, if I'm not mistaken, 2 billion of total value locked. And we continue to explore the ecosystem and to get an introduction to great projects we have found for you on this Layer 2. So let me welcome my guest today. He is Darius from Blitz. And Blitz is a uh, DEX built on Blaster 2. It allows trading, sport, and futures with fast speed and efficiency. So I'm looking forward to the great talk. So Darius, welcome to our show guest to have you on. Thanks, Eugene. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So let's start with your story in this amazing web free space, which has already existed for 15 years already, starting with Bitcoin in 2009. So how you gather what excites you most of all in this rapidly growing part of the world? Yeah, so um, I think I first got introduced to Web3 in about 2009, 10. Very early, a friend of mine tried to make me buy some Bitcoin. Um, I think it was around $10 at the time. And he said, you know, come on, let's put $10,000 in. What's the worst thing that could happen? And I said, it could be a scam. I could lose $10,000. So that was my like first intro to Bitcoin. And then obviously, you know what happened from then. And I... <clears throat> I got a bit more serious with it again in about 2017. Um, BitMEX came out, was like the first derivatives exchange on crypto. Um, and around that time, you could do the spot perk basis and earn anywhere from like 100 to like 400% APR just doing spot versus perks. It was kind of crazy. And so I was doing that in relatively large size for about six months while I was working at a hedge fund. Um, my background is in traditional finance. I've always been a trader, I worked at large banks and then hedge funds. And then in 2020, I drifted away. And then when the COVID happened and Bitcoin went down to like $3,000, I started getting interested again. I bought some Bitcoin, bought some ETH. Um, and by the end of that year, I just kind of decided it would be cool to go and have a bit more fun, get involved in crypto. So initially I was on the trading side. <clears throat> and then I had an idea for like a cross tra cross currency trading platform. Um, and so initially I went out and launched some money to do that on Terra. So I met my co-founder. We started the journey, looked at launching on Terra. And then we were a couple of weeks away from testnet when um terra blew up so we had to cut our team move to arbitrum um and so the end result is what you see today but it's been a really long journey <laughs> pardon me oh sounds like well journey so what values of the ecosystem excites uh, you most of all what i most excited about in the ecosystem permission less or free for choosing money on so on so forth yeah so i I think right now um, we're like super, super laser guided on improving UX. We think one of the biggest problems with DeFi is the user experience is frankly terrible. Um, I don't think we're the only ones to think that. So you can see like the general standard of user interaction, tooling, things that people are building is like way cooler than it was even a year ago or two. Um, I'm really focused there. I think in terms of ecosystems, the sort of diversity of L2s built on ETH, the revival of the Solana ecosystem are all super exciting. I think it all points towards kind of a multi-chain future where apps are going to have to exist on many different things. And so that's kind of the focus for us right now is two folders, get user experience up, but also build something that's multi-chain and really fluid. And Blast is our first efforts on that so initially we built on arbitrum we built vertex and now we're on blast building blitz but those two products are very intertwined in terms of liquidity execution and so we think we can bring the best of what we did on vertex to use it on blast on blitz and that's going to be really exciting for people in the blast ecosystem especially with like all the points programs and everything that's going on it should be like decent opportunity for people by the way, uh, thank you for mentioning the Vertex product. Let me clarify, and my team is especially curious. Is Vertex and Blitz are 
is one the fork of another or are they related to each other? Are the teams different? So what what, what do we know about difference between uh, Blitz and Vertex? So Blitz is built on top of the Vertex SDK and the Vertex smart contract. Um, I think the bit that's like really special is we've built a multi-chain technology we call Edge. So it's a synchronous order book. It means that all of the liquidity we have on Arbitrum currently on Vertex will be available to users on Blast. But then Blitz users get a whole different user experience. You come to the front end, it looks different. It's got a vibe that's like more tailored for that. It's got its own points program. So normally when teams fork or take things multi-chain, what happens is it generally like dilutes liquidity. So you get like a worse experience on the second chain and then the third chain's worse than the second chain and so on and so forth, right? Where it just, it's kind of a crappy experience for everyone. The virtue with this is everything we add on Blitz will be available to users on Vertex. Everything we add on Vertex is available to users on Blitz. So you get a multiplier effect rather than like a negative effect. So it's quite exciting. We're really excited to see what happens. Got it, thanks. <clears throat> It'll be a good photo. Let me thank Uli Oliver from Blast off another good product on Blast. We did a podcast episode with him recently, so find the link in the description. So Oli, greetings for you. Thanks for for having Darius on, on our podcast today. So let's dive into Blast. This layer two seems quite controversial due to its rewarding option. So why are we choosing Blast? What are pros and cons from your side? And will you recommend to projects? future potential builders to go on last and build this layer two? Yeah, so I think one of the problems in Web3 is like people get, well, one of the virtues of Web3 is that people get very passionate about it. But one of the problems about Web3 is that people get very passionate about it, right? So <laughs> it, they kind of treat it like religion. So they get certain ideas in their head, something has to be done a certain way, it has to be treated a certain way. The fact is, as a founder, what you want is, if you're going to launch on a chain, you want engaged users, plenty of capital, people that are going to be incentivized to trade and do things. <laughs> and I think, honestly, with the Blast design, their team kind of nailed it. You know, they got a community behind them from day one before they even had a product. They got everyone really excited. They've added some stuff that like gives it some unique selling point. They've added a very generous token program, which means that participants in the ecosystem are going to make a good amount of cash, you hope. And so users love it. You know, the people that I hear, you know, to use your words, finding it controversial, they tend to be more kind of Web3 purists. And that's great. You know, like those people contribute an immense amount to the ecosystem. But when it comes down to actual retail users, they are super excited about Blast. They love it. They love the concept. They buy into Pac-Man as a founder. They buy into all the things that they've done in Blur. And, you know, for us, we want to be where users are. So, you know, it's kind of a no-brainer. We spoke to that team. We saw the vision and we decided to try and do something together. <clears throat> well, that's that's a great point. If, if users, final users love a chain, so builders should be on this chain, and now it's open now. Yeah. Can you please explain how, in particular, specific features of Blast? Uh, I may realize that it's 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 native yield, of course, the first the first feature uh, feature which works. How is it uh, specifically utilized in Blitz product? Yeah, so Blitz has an internal money market that links to our other instances on other chains. So the good thing with that is is that Currently, that money market on Arbitrum, USDC is running at around 40 to 50% yield. People are borrowing to trade and generating a lot of money for depositors. The yield on Blast will become part of that money market. So it should boost that even further. It just means it's just a way more stable yield for users. Um, and we think depositors will be excited. You know, Generally, we run pretty high on yield anyway. This is just going to add to that. I think more interestingly, the native yield on ETH will probably become something that does more dynamic things for our money market as well. So 
yeah it's cool i think it's just more money for people right and people like money and they made it easy and that's great well you know my team members were quite surprised with uh the promising of at least that the machine orders will take just from 10 to 30 milliseconds first they I mean, asked me uh, is that true <laughs> and then they asked me to talk about what, what other <clears throat> it's uh, market values and proposition what should we know in general about all the market proposition of please yeah those, those got that <laughs> to be honest the latency you usually runs a lot faster than that mm. 10 to 30 milliseconds is in a fast market in a typical market our market makers typically clock around three to five milliseconds so it's very fast the way we do it is we run an off-chain matching engine um we call a sequencer so that edge sequencer goes across all our chains and then users match on the sequencer level and then all the settlement custody security happens on chain so we've taken the execution layer away and then everything to do with security and holding of assets is held in smart contracts. So we never touch your assets, but we just enable this stuff to happen very, very fast. So when you go on our website, you click a button, the look and feel of it is really like a centralized exchange. You shouldn't feel any difference as a user. It's very smooth, but everything that happens in the background is secured by smart contracts and blockchain. So we feel like it's the best of both worlds. Um, and the feedback we get from users is they really love using it. They just feel it's the like best thing that they can use. So that's great, yeah. Well, sounds well. The Blitz has a sport and futures index. So don't you plan to expand the list of products for users in the future? So what would we expand to? Options, you mean? Or do you mean into different markets? Any, any, anything apart from <laughs> support on futures. Yeah, so... We can trade on this? <laughs> I think, to be honest, right now we're just sort of focusing on our core competencies. Mm. Um, the offering we have is very broad. At the moment, the only thing after spot on options would probably be... We have a money market as well, so people can come and borrow lend, like Aave style. I think the only thing we might add is, you know, we you could add like options or you could add NFTs, but frankly, options don't do that well with like an on-chain risk engine. The complexity of doing it well means that on-chain options are very capital inefficient. And actually, I hate to say that because my background is in options trading, right? So I'd love it if we had options available. You know, <clears throat> Blitz is really the product we built because we were traders and we wanted stuff that we would use as traders. But I think putting the option stuff to one side, NFT seems a little bit far outside our core competency. Um, so right now, I'm not sure. I don't see it. We're open to it. Um, we see people starting to do things like we might move into more exotic contracts, like move contracts people do use for trading vol, or I spoke to a very interesting project recently that's doing a volatility index. I think we can get like 90% of the effect by doing one of these volatility indices as a per, rather than using, you know, rather than doing something that's kind of adjacent to it, like options, you know, users don't really care. They just want to like express a view. We think that's probably a better risk expression than trying to do options, which would be a bit messy. Well, I think if users will let you know what all they want. So you Typically, they just tell me they want more meme coins. You know, that's meme. usually, yeah, usually that's what I hear is just list more meme coins. List do you more... have an idea why do they want that? <coughs> because they grew in price in 10x in one second, <laughs> milliseconds. Not a meme. It's just volatile, right? All right. uh, traders in crypto tend to be uh, pretty aggressive. They want to apply leverage to very volatile assets. I, th I think, you know, when you see the price action in like Floki, Pepe, Bonk, um, our users just want to be able to trade those pretty aggressively. Well, it's a great moment to ask about Blitz team, its world map, the current stage and the plans till the end of 2024. What have we to know about these core things 
Yeah, so I, I think the big thing for us is we're just pushing towards release, um, releasing a V2 of our contracts, which will enable more liquid market. So more of the meme coins that I just mentioned. That'll go out in the next couple of days. And then we'll launch next week um, the full version. At the moment, we have a deposit contract up. So people are earning points for just depositing cash into our contract. When we launch, then we'll start a trading program. We have Blast points available, Blitz points, Blast gold. So there's like sort of three different programs running at once. <clears throat> and then that will all be integrated with our cross-chain liquidity. So next week is where the rubber really hits the road. Um, I think that matches a lot of what you see in the ecosystem. People are just sort of like getting things going, making sure stuff works, contracts are up, et cetera. Um, and then, yeah, we're off to the races, right? So I think the next big event will be the Blast airdrop whenever that happens uh, in the next couple of months. And then um, we'll see after that. So I'm just excited to get our V2 version out. So this is like something we've worked on specifically to be there for Blast, along with the cross-chain liquidity, which will mean that like when you turn on, we'll have excellent liquidity day one, excellent trading experience, more products we can list. It's just cooler for users, you know? Well, you made clear that you are Blitz uh, is recently far from NFT topic at all, but I have to ask you because our podcast is entitled Smart NFT. <laughs> We're specifically related with Smart NFT, NFT 2.0. We are not <laughs> about dump NFT, NFT 1.0, which are related to just, just pictures where NFT and Smart is both the color yeah. and size. So what are your general thoughts on the current stage of NFT at all, NFT segment, because NFT is a cool thing, right? And in particular on Smart NFT, are you familiar with the concept? Do you feel it's feel it's, uh, it's useful for ecosystem? Any thoughts on that specific yeah. topic? I think it's really interesting um, when you talk to people that know a lot about NFTs. So I do not classify myself in that sort of bracket, but one of our investors um, is called Derek Edwards. He's pretty well known in the NFT space, like involved in a lot of big projects. He does podcast with Kevin Rose and all of that. So he's deep, deep in the weeds. And when I spoke to him about it, he said, the problem with most NFTs is they kind of got a bad rap because you think NFT, you think monkey picture or, you know, a thing of a rock. It doesn't really do anything right. It's just a JPEG. And, you know, people are rightly a bit skeptical, even though there is value to that, like, blockchain art right that there, there, there is always a value in the first version of a thing and i think there are genuine interesting experiments that it's easy to be dismissive but he said you know really an nft is like it's like dismissing paper paper can be many things right a paper can be a legal contract a paper can be a love letter a paper can be a work of art a paper can be a play it can be uh instruction manual it can be many things and the same thing with nfts and this development of programmable smart NFTs starts to showcase some of the power of these things. I don't think we know quite where the use cases are going, but I think it's exciting for that segment of the industry. And, you know, we'll keep an eye on it. And we speak to the team at Wassies. They just did an interesting experiment with uh, their new collection. I think there's just going to be more of these experiments coming out and soon enough you'll start to see how these could be used for more financial applications and things. So yeah, I think it's cool. I just don't know that much about it. Yeah, definitely. All that you mentioned is the issue about uh, utility of NFTs and its uh, usefulness. Uh, so use, use cases. So we are at the stage of discovery and uh, NFT as, as a tool is an absolutely versatile thing. Maybe yeah. utilizing dozens of cases, use cases, and the other in the beginning. So uh, do you have maybe any plans to, DAOs are quite popular in space, do you any plans to reorganize Blitz as a DAO? Or, and if yes, uh, did you think about using soul bound tokens, another quite popular to topic for transactional reputation? If somebody yeah. has a soul bound token, this means A or B by them. And nothing, nobody can erase this fact from his history forever. So, what are your thoughts on DAOs, SBT plans? Um, 
I'm going to say something that's probably not that popular in the space. My general view is that DAOs are not a great way to run certain protocols. It's definitely certain types of protocols. You know, with our platform, there's a lot of risk. Um, you know, it's very technical. There are a lot of things that do not lend themselves to an open distributed organization which that has to be by its nature right? where anyone can join contribute knowledge because there's just a higher threshold to technical competence in the perp space than there is in say an nft project so pardon me i've had a bit of a cough um i think for us no immediate plans for the dow um it may be a thing that we look at in the future. I think um, community participation and getting people to have more feed into what we do. We already do that in an informal way. Maybe we formalize that a bit more. So, you know, I mentioned people asking us for meme coins or more leverage or whatever. That comes via our Discord and we talk to community there and they tell us things. And that, I think, is fun. But no immediate plans for a downer. Well, I always uh, ask my guests on the podcast to make any call to action. So it's a great time to mention what do you need for reach your goals, so people, money, and resources, confidence, and so on and so forth. So say anything you uh, think you have to say now as a call to action, whatever you need to reach the goals of Blitz for our audience, for anybody who is listening to us. Yeah, I think main thing is go to Blitz, deposit, um get ready keep an eye on socials and as soon as we launch start trading try it compare it to our competitors see whether you like it see how what you think i'm pretty confident you're gonna love it i'm pretty confident if you're someone that trades perps a lot on chain it'll be the best experience you have um so yeah just get in there try it see how the points program works etc and then you know hopefully you'll be on the journey with us for the next year or two it's gonna be great Absolutely. So needless to say that all the links you may find in the description. And the final question, Dar, is we are in the beginning of the March 2024 and everything is changing rapidly in the space. What trends, current trends in Web3 you personally follow for now? What trends you would highly suggest to follow for now or in this year? Um... I just came back from East Denver, which is why I got a cough. Um, <laughs> I think, you know, obviously people are very hyped about AI and gaming. I think that tends to be a bit cyclical um, and we'll see how that plays out. I think, honestly, this cycle, my expectation is that we finally start to see some of the trading activity move on chain and they're going to be some big winners we think vertex will be one of those vertex and blitz you know that general edge network but the i think sort of real things that people are going to start looking at you know blast has been a big launch this year i think you see something like bearer chain which is a bit more fun is going to be pretty big um, and then I think a thematic thing is probably going to be Bitcoin L2s. Um, I think now after the Taproot upgrade, people are finally starting to attack that problem. Um, I would be very surprised if we don't see a major Bitcoin L2 operating within the next 12 months and doing a lot of volume and user activity. So, yeah, there's lots going on. People were very optimistic in Denver. So I think you see the community is active again and launch of the Bitcoin ETF brought new capital to the space. So it'd be fun. Well, funny voices. And <clears throat> is there anything you would like to add finally in the end of our talk? No, thanks for having me. I appreciate you doing this. You know, great interview. And um, I hope your users enjoy using Blitz and participate in the ecosystem. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, this has been the episode uh, regarding uh, Blitz on Blast and uh, Darius, Darius, uh, team member of Blitz, yeah. find the links in the description, join Blitz, explore the Blast ecosystem, ecosystem and stay with us. We're going to show you by faces 
uh, founders and team members of a great last solar layer two projects with which we've been exploring for recent months. And thank you again, Oli, Oliver from Blast Off for me making this episode possible. Please like, share, subscribe, stay tuned, and bye bye. Cheers, bye bye. Blockchain, B L O C K chain. Digital money, smart contracts, NFT, IDO, decentralization, transparency, so many opportunities, but so many challenges. Some financial manipulators by their actions confuse blockchain solutions and block their development. The idea that the blockchain should bring copyright and royalties protection to the next level is quite old, but the realizations of this idea are not perfect at all. There is another problem of determining the value of a particular cryptocurrency or NFT. These and other problems need to be solved. Fortunately, the blockchain infrastructure is evolving. My name is E, Mr. E, and I represent the Invalo project. Many things have already been invented in the blockchain today. Tokens, smart contracts, platforms for creating your own coins, NFTs, exchanges for buying, selling, and exchanging all these blockchain resources. Envelope is another step in the development of crypto technologies. The protocol that works with NFT and cryptocurrencies. The idea is simple but disruptive. Let's assume you have an NFT, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Using the Envelope protocol, you can wrap the original NFT accompanied with several tokens. Technically, you get a similar NFT. But what is the break for you? Once wrapped, the token has a number of additional features that were not available before. The minimal cost appears. It is provided with coins wrapped together with NFT. An asset wrapped with envelope has a number of properties that allow the original author to receive royalties from the resale of that asset. Various rules can be applied to the wrapped token. For example, a lock period for unwrapping. It secures the asset till the determined moment or safeguards it from speculation during the high period. At the same time, wrap tokens can be transferred and traded. These are just some of the scenarios for using envelope. NFTs become more popular and the tools provided by envelope expand the opportunities of NFTs utilization. Wide application possibilities are achieved due to the fact that, in addition to the protocol, the project includes a number of subsystems. The protocol provides functions wrapping and unwrapping. Oracle Mechanics provides asset valuation using analytical algorithms. Index provides a summary assessment of several NFT assets with the common criteria. The project has its own token, which connects all elements of the system. Altogether, this is invalid a tool in the blockchain world for building modern and secure systems in various fields. Find more info about the project on the website. Invalid. Make your NFT valuable. Just practical. No hype.